Okay, so we're going to go over some concepts for Ichi Monji no Kamae and the Kihon version and what I feel is being taught in the Kihon version. First, I see the three Ichi Monji, uh, Icho and Jumonji, not so much as particular fighting techniques at all, actually, but as containers of grander concepts that can be interchanged and should be interchanged and explored. It's more than just learning how to do or or shuto and multi shuto and this block and that block and this big and that kick. That's part of it, but it goes way beyond that. Now, the first thing with the three koshi sampo is it's a study of time. Ichi Monji is the easiest time. It's block and then return strike. Now I should say too that once you learn each one of these, they can all be interchanged within the, the framework or the structure of whatever one you're doing. So you can do the Jodan Uke and the Mote Shuto of Ichi Monji, but with the timing of Jumanji or with the timing of Icho. Those can all be interchanged as can all the techniques. But in the basic way, Ichi Monji defend, and then counter-strike, okay? In, in the general classes, I teach from the Tenshi Jin Rock and the Maki, and my Ichi Monji is with the hand here over around the shoulder, kind of Togaku Niru Ichi Monji hybrid, Koku Niru Seigan Open Lab idea. We don't get into the specifics of the Gyoku Niru style of it until we study the kata of the uh, of the view. He is going to punch. Now, the timing, what makes it different than uh, Suino Kata, Suino Kata breaks it down more. You do the Jodo Nuke, then you raise the hand, then you do the Shuto. With the Ichi Monji, the timing is a little bit different. Let's go on the same over here. Okay. So, as the first basic is where I'm coming in a little bit, a lot of people say this ain't in there. I say, watch out, Sumi Sensei. Watch out Sumi Sensei once he starts to get talking when he's teaching this. How he'll always favor the lead leg when he's doing the back foot step. If you don't believe me, watch out Sumi Sensei. But if you just want to use your own brain, you, what you'll know is if you got your weight on your back foot, how are you going to move it? It's, it makes no sense to move it. Your front foot is the one you would move. So if my, see if you can watch the feet, okay? or at least get the feet in the picture here. If I'm weighted in the back and he's punching me, then this front foot is the one that's easy to move. That's the one that you would move. If you want to move your back foot, then what you're doing is you're placing, it's part of a Kudai Dori, you're placing your face in a position, so if he hits me here, he makes contact there, but stay there. Right? Now watch. Keep your hand there. But you're really here. So you're setting up the false distance anyway. It helps get your... Because what you see a lot of people do, they don't understand that. They're not doing that right. Where as he goes to punch, their distance is wrong, so they move. And they do this. Stay. So I'm baiting the punch. This is part of the Kuradori. Ito isoku no mai. The distance of where he can actually attack. If you're too far away, there is no attack. If the people are punching you from too far away, you're not training right. If you're too close, hands up. But even in each, he's fine. If I'm like here, he can just grab a hand. So, that's too close. Ito isoku no mai is the distance where, with one step, he can make an attack. So it's kind of like a brim of fire, as Bruce Lee used to call it, right? It's that, that edge. So if I'm, he's got his hands up, and I'm here, I'm okay. But if I, as I go forward, if I want to attack, watch, I pull his hand back as I'm walking to the forward. Far, and you try to attack with your own stuff, or if you're, you're 
sin or life. I'm already inside this guy. That's why in the Lord's hands for reasons, a lot of times you just check your pants or you just come right here to his face, right? Because the training to change his demise and now that you have him the two monkey principle, as I said, they're all blended together. Once I'm here, I'm inside. Now this hand is active. I keep my Kamai as I rock forward. Sorry. I keep my Kamai as I rock forward. Which breaks the structure, which is the Koko. Now from here, you don't step and then hit. A lot of people, when I see them cutting with the sword, they're making this mistake. High level people, too. He steps forward, they'll cut, step forward, and then cuts. It's ridiculous. Back up again. Kali don't do it. Fighters with the swords from the Philippines. Western fencing don't do it. And as I just found out recently, neither do traditional Japanese schools do it. Because they all understand the same thing. If he steps forward before he cuts, you intercept him. <laughs> so if he puts that down here, and come a little bit closer in the frame, and we're here like this, and he just steps at me before he punches, you intercept him, obviously. Right? Why wait? If he roundhouse kicks me, boom, you intercept him. If you see it coming, you hit first. <laughs> 